Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and it's a pleasure, pleasure to follow uh, my honourable friend, the Member for Christchurch. Uh, but I'm going to take the debate back to our dogs, if possible. <laughs> I can't tell you how delighted I am to be here today to support the bill, this bill in the name of my honourable friend, the Member for West Dorset. It was disappointing, to say the least, to see the bill fall in the last Parliament due to timescales, but I'm delighted that my honourable friend has picked up the mantle and will see through its implementation. I am owned in the spirit of fostering European relations by three French bulldogs. Although judging by the photographs I'm sent from home when I'm working away in this place, of them taking over my sofa, it would appear they own my whole family. If you'll indulge me a little, Madam Deputy Speaker, Mimi, Ollie and Piper are delightful little dogs, each of them champions, not in the crufts sense I might add, but respectively in snorting and worse, laziness and annoyingness. But no matter how annoying, smelly or noisy they are, and no matter how many times I tell them I'm sending them to the dog's home, I could quite obviously never do that and would certainly never wish harm on them. As a child, I always wanted a dog, and when I was in secondary school, I volunteered on Saturday mornings with a local charity called Animal Concern, which at the time was based in Northside in my constituency of Workington. They had kennels in what was originally a number of allotments and had a fence that was eight or nine feet high, topped with barbed wire. There often wasn't many weeks or months went by when volunteers didn't find a dog thrown over the fence or tied to the gate during the night. What is most depressing about that is that not a single dog would have been turned away at the gate and no questions need have been asked. There were some incredibly depressing stories accompanying some of the residents and some that we would never get to know the background to. It made 12 year old me wonder how some people could inflict the harm that they did. It was only when I was a few years older that my mother deemed me responsible enough to get my own dog, a decision she no doubt came to regret and even today I'm not entirely sure she'd deem me responsible again. Since Jess there's only been one small stint where my home has been without a dog and I was supported through the shock of the first 10 years of my married life by a wonderful English Springer Spaniel called Ben, who took his last walk over the Rainbow Bridge a couple of years ago. As we've heard, it's the love of a rescued Springer Spaniel Poppy that gave my honourable friend, the member for West Dorset, the inspiration to pick up the bill we discussed today. The love between a dog and their family member should never be underestimated. The youngest of our three dogs, Piper, was born in our house when our youngest daughter was a toddler. They're now inseparable, the very best of friends, and I'm sure that Piper sees Olivia as any other litter mate, as well as a source of food when Piper's hiding under the table. While Olivia sees Piper more like one of her dolls that she can attempt to dress up and place in a cot. Piper's a bit too wily for that. It's for those reasons, among many others, that I despair of anyone that can inflict deliberate cruelty upon an animal, and I warmly welcome the provisions of this bill. The working title of the bill, Finn's Law Part 2, as we know, takes its name from a tremendously courageous police dog who was horrifically attacked in the line of duty. It's right today that we pay tribute to the work of my honourable friend, the member for North East Hertfordshire, in marshalling through this place the original Finn's Law, the Animal Welfare Service Animals Bill 2019, which sought to provide increased protection for service animals, abolishing the abhorrent defence that a defendant against such a crime could claim they were protecting themselves. Finn and his handler, PC Dave Wardle, have shown extraordinary determination and resilience over the last four years dedicating a huge amount of time in ensuring that the animals that serve us on the front line and in other service roles, but also those at home that provide us with the love and affection we need instinctively when we require it, are protected in law. My inbox tells me that this is an issue that a large number of my constituents in Workington care deeply about. They were delighted when the orig original Finns law gained royal assent and will be even more delighted, I'm sure, when this one does. Across this house, we will all have been shocked by some of the stories of animal cruelty we've read and in every instance we will have asked our, ourselves how anyone could do such a thing. But it happens, and it's right that we in this place be the voice of those that cannot speak for themselves. And while I talk mainly of my own experience as a dog owner, it's not just about dogs, of course, in my home or in the general debate. Our house is also home to three goldfish, the latest edition of which had to have the colours of Spider-Man or Batman, at Olivia's request. We've got Spike, a bearded dragon belonging to Harry, we previously had Ezra, a royal python of Elliot's. We've had ferrets, rabbits, chickens, quail, ducks. We've rescued hedgehogs, blackbirds, seagulls, and I've lost count of the number of caterpillars we've raised to butterflies and tadpoles to frogs. My constituency of Workington has many organisations and animal rescuers only too willing to rush to the aid of an animal in distress. And I speak not only of animal concern where I spent some of my childhood Saturday mornings. They've long since moved from Northside to the constituency of my honourable friend, the member for Copeland. 
But I also speak of organisations like Knoxwood Rescue, who work tirelessly with injured wildlife and pets and have a marvellous centre which is always worth a visit. Like the ubiquitous RSPCA, who have a branch in West Cumbria, and, those, and of those smaller organisations, often headed up by solitary or small numbers of dedicated individuals, like Mel of Animal Haven in Marlborough, who are raising funds for a brand new state-of-the-art rehabilitation centre, like Jade of West Cumbria Wildlife and Rehab in Northside, who works as a vet by day, rescues wildlife, but also volunteers for cats protection in what might normally be deemed spare time. I also speak of Pet Encounter in Workington, whose work with animals to educate young people have led them also into pet rescue, of Windmill Farm Canine Centre who deal with stray dogs, and of countless other volunteers that go unnamed. I also had the pleasure earlier this year of visiting the fantastic Racehorse Rescue Centre in the constituency of my honourable friend, the member for Penrith and the Border, himself an equine vet, accompanied by the Minister for Civil Society from the other place. I think he makes an important point about racehorses, but would he agree with me? I'm one of the few people in this house who have spoken on greyhound uh, welfare as well. And there is an onus, whether it be on uh, horse, horse racing or whether it be on greyhound racing, that the, the, the people that have those dogs or horses that often make a lot of money out of them then owe them a duty of care after that they cease to owe money. And particularly on greyhound, there is a big difference between the number of greyhounds that are registered as racing and the number of greyhounds that, when they finish, actually are uh, re rehomed. And there is a big question there. I thank uh, the Honourable Gentleman for his intervention. And I do agree that there is an onus on any owner or breeder or um, racing stable of any of these animals to ensure that those animals are looked after uh, later on in life once, uh, once the duty is done. Um, I must also take the opportunity to thank our vets like Millcroft, who without question will take an injured animal in at the door, recognising that it's unlikely they will be paid for the work they undertake. It is down to these people and the many other thousands of paid staff and volunteers across the country that animals that do suffer from these horrendous attacks are cared for and in many cases rehabilitated, rehabilitated back to health and who go on to find the forever home that they deserve. It is to those animals, to those volunteers, to those vets, veterinary staff, animal rescue staff, alongside our own military and emergency services, that we owe the duty of passing this bill today and in its further stages.